So I have to ask, just right off the jump here, Chase, um, what, what is it like to see a concert in a cave? Amazing. Better than I thought. I can't imagine that the acoustics have to be, I have to imagine the acoustics are probably incredible in a cave. Mm, no? It's, it's a lot of sound, <laughs> but because the way it flows, it, uh, you can't always hear the audio, but you know what? It's about the aesthetic. It's about so it the wasn't experience. that cool. Uh, it sounds like the music's cool if you're close, uh -huh. like. But if you were one of those people in the, all the way in the back, just you're just getting like re up. yeah, you're just reverbing. But nobody cared. It was so cool. Okay, and it was so hot outside, and you get down in the caverns, dog. It's like hitting that cool AC on a summer day. It's a little misty. You do love that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, what would it have been like if it rained? Ooh. Even cooler, yeah. Because like when you walk in the entrance, it has that uh, amusement park feel to it. You know, it's got that little mist vibe going on. Mm -hmm. You know how they mm -hmm. hit you with that, like yep. a Disney World or a, a Dolly World. They have all the misters. Oh yeah, everywhere. dude, yeah. that's how it feels. Yeah, it was sick. If you ever get a chance to go watch a concert at the Caverns, they do it right, my friend. They do it right. But get close is what you're saying. You got to get close for your inside the Caverns because they have the outdoor venue, which yeah. where most of the, the concerts were. Yeah, big old amphitheater in the rocks. You're like in a mountain face. That's so cool. cool. No big deal. Tennessee stuff. Tennessee stuff. I was talking to them yesterday. How cool do you have to feel if you're those two guys that started this? I'm like, hey, we should, brother, we should get a concert in a cave down here. Yeah. Got then, Rock City where you can go down however long, you know, far below the surface. And now you've got the caverns. Yeah. And it's talked about on every big pod. Like all these comedians want to do it. Artists are coming there like crazy. I was doing the thing where I was like, okay, it's my first time here. I got there. I saw the amphitheater first. And I was like, well, this is really cool. What is the caverns going to be like? Yeah. And I was walking down with Hannah and we were like, you know, we're going to get in here and buy these red clay strays tickets next couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, probably so. Are uh, we haven't bought them yet because okay. they sold out three nights in a row. Wow. And so we're like, do we want to pay aftermarket prices? It's like 120 bucks. Damn. general admission yeah tough bro yeah tough. Well, for the experience and i mean i if you really like them then then i would go especially for the experience of seeing somebody you like and getting the experience to go to the caverns i know you just went so you don't really need the secondary experience there but still i mean if you really like them yeah that is a place that you would want to go see but also i'll say this and this is nothing against like the bands that were there in the caverns but they were the kind of like the secondary bands uh this was Cave Jam. Listen, I am not a big jam bandy kind of guy, but all my friends and family like it. So I go with them. I hang out, watch the old people vibe. They have a great time. They love it. I liked Porch Fest. Porch Fest was fun. It was great. This is a little bit different. Yeah, it's just a tiny bit. Yeah. The there's, a, there's a lot of different smells in the air. We'll say that. Okay. Uh, I heard so. I smell some different smells in the, in, in the air around Porch Fest, around that, uh, that part. Very true. Very yeah. true. So we have we have some fun events planned i'm sure there but i that place is going to get massive that is going to be a red rocks light i'll say that never going to be to the extent but everybody want to come there because you can make a festival out of it there's too many smart entrepreneurial people in this world for and especially in the entertainment industry dog yeah it's going to be sick yeah it's going to be sick. I really need to check out who's going to be there and see if there's anybody that I know, anybody that I like, or anything like that that's coming to the Caverns. Because I would love to go to a concert there. It's just so unique. Yeah. It's so worth it. If you ever, like, if you find somebody, and there will be, mm -hmm. in the next two years, I guarantee it. Comedians will get there. You saying I'm going to be here for the next two years? Yeah. I'm going to be here for at least the next year. You know that. Yeah, I know that much. <laughs> I know that much. I know that much, buddy. Yep. Uh, one more. So at we'll uh, at least one more. I'm hoping for more, but because uh, we want to build this chatted up podcast and show and everything like that. By the way, I'm Greg Launer. That's Chase Green. We're the only ones here today. That's it. Everybody, Everybody else is vacationing. Everybody else is on location around. And we, and you get to go to the caverns. I got to see Chris D'Elia. How was he? Uh, he was hilarious. But you know what I will say? I'm not, this is not a politics show. I'll say that. I'll say that right from the jump. I am not a politics guy at all. So I hate this time of the, like the year or you know, the time of, of, of life when the election is going to be big and oh political talk is ramping up and 
So like both comedians, the opener and Chris, they both, you know, they, they did some political jokes and things like that. And it's just like, uh, mm, okay. It's not like really my favorite thing in the world, but it's fine. That stick feels very worn. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, it's like, so easy. I it mean, it's, like, it's, it's easy material. Through. Yeah. That you can just like lean into and you might offend some people and you're not going to fit that. That's the way of the world nowadays. Yeah. No matter what you say, not everybody's going to, you know, jive with it. Yeah. So to speak. And some people like really nail it. Like some people mm-hmm. are really funny about it. And I'm sure Chris was funny. Yeah. Like it's one of those. And listen, there's probably a lot of people came down that loved those jokes. So we're just not those folks. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. But in general, he was hilarious. It was great to see him. Uh, the one thing I wish he would have done, and I said this to you earlier, I wish he would have interacted with the crowd a little bit more. The only yeah. time he interacted with the crowd was when there was one woman who just would not stop laughing. Like, while well, everybody else, like, all right, he finished the joke and she was still laughing. Everybody else was silent. And he, like, called her out. But you know how you're in a, like, a comedy show and people are, like, yelling random things? The first comedian would, like, grab that and run with it. Yeah. He just was like, I'm on my routine. Okay. I wonder how people feel about Chattanooga. Like, is there a stop? They're just like, you know, this was a Saturday night show. It's not like he's going, this is not a Wednesday. Yeah. So I kind of feel like Chattanooga should be at least a little bit of a hitter. You should be kind of ready to go, but maybe not. Maybe they just don't feel that way. It's like, I'll save it for Nashville. I'll save it for Atlanta. <laughs> Which I don't like that. I don't no, like I don't that either. one bit. I don't, I don't think they saved anything. I don't think no, he saved anything. He, just, thought, he was just on his riff. He was on his thing. Yeah. He, it just seemed like he was like, hey, I know the jokes that I want to tell. I don't really have a lot of time to interact with the with the audience, but mm-hmm. I'm going to be funny still and tell my jokes and do those things. And again, like he did a little bit, but I, I always like a comedian who can interact with the audience. I think it's just, it feels a little bit more authentic and it's funny yeah. in the moment because like, that's not something you plan. Like I, I can't imagine standing up there and just telling jokes and recanting stories from my life and things like that and trying to find a way to make them funny. It To me, it would be very difficult. Like I can be funny, like in a general conversation, but to stand up there and to articulate something and make it hilarious for hundreds of thousands of people to laugh. Like I think Miggy would be, I was sitting there and I thought Miggy would be great at this. Yeah. He's the one guy I'm like, yeah. I think Garrett would be good at it actually. As well. Yeah. I was fixing to say, I, I was going to roll into that. I was like, I think he has, he has that potential. He doesn't yeah. always think he does, but I'm like, dog, you he got that. Certainly does. Yeah. You have got it. The way he tells jokes sometimes I'm like, man. And also he can probably be the most uncorked of our group. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. He and Joseph. No, I'm just kidding. Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. Love Joseph. Out in Colorado this yeah. weekend. Good man. Garrett's out in Hawaii. Maggie's in Florida. It's uh, least surprising thing. Garrett and Bliss at uh, the Disney Resort in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> love you guys. Pretty much. Yeah, we love you guys. Uh, I wonder whose decision that was. Um, but anyways, yeah, good times. Uh, we do have to say though. That's uh, we can we get three claps one time because your Tennessee Volunteers have 50 wins on the season for the baseball team and they are not only SEC regular season champions but now tournament champions as well. Yes, dang dog, it feels so good to be a ball right now. Yeah, sure does. And listen to the Rocky Top over those PA speakers down in Alabama. Mm. And man, you know what? Uh, watching that last inning, I told Hannah they didn't score. In the night, then I was like, man, I could really use one more. Ride. I heard you say that. I was like laying down in my room. I was taking a little nap before we did, did the show here on, on a Sunday. Obviously, it was pre recorded and, and we dropped it for you on Monday. But I literally heard you say that when, when they had some runners on in the night. Yeah. I was like, I'd want one more. And yep. they get those two. And I was like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. With a runner on second, I think one out. Mm-hmm. And then Calm just pitches two dirty at bats, bro. Uh, that his breaking ball. Those last eight pitches got real yeah. nasty, filthy. It's, filthy. it's so in, in, incredible how guys can just kind of sort of turn that on in a big moment to have that level of stuff and just like throw a hammer or two. Yeah, just really when they need to bear down. But the real you mentioned Combs and obviously gave up that run in the ninth, but uh, it was just one run. Canell gave up the other. They pulled him. Obviously, he was responsible for one. And Canell was awesome coming in and kind of stabilizing things late in the game. But after AJ Russell had given up a home run in that first inning. Great job by the freshman Dylan Lloyd to come in there and just stable the ship. That's all we. That's all we needed. That's it. That's all we needed. Three pitchers in that inning. Like, just calm down, boys. That's all we need. And I think this is big for Tennessee. Is we didn't throw our main guys a whole lot during this series. I think that's been something in the past 
that you worry about. It's like, yeah, you want to win both tournament and regular season, but you got to save your stuff as much as humanly possible for the run that you're about to make, especially yeah. with them, because you're going to get the number one, one overall seed. Uh, if you're listening to this before 12 p.m. on Monday, you're going to be fine. But afterwards, we're going to understand who Tennessee is going to be playing in their regional. Uh, this selection show is going to be a lot of fun. Doesn't it feel crazy? Like, I know LSU's had a lot of love for baseball mm -hmm. for a while, but now Tennessee bringing what they bring to the table as far as the fan brace. They have embraced this sport so much. It kind of blows my mind how like big this tournament's gotten because they were like, this is a record breaking attendance in Hoover. Yeah. I think they said 135,000 people attended throughout this week compared to another big, big conference in baseball and ACC, only 75,000. Yeah. And that's at a nice stadium in Charlotte. Yeah. It's in Hoover, Alabama. Hoover, Alabama. Look, those people will travel. And I think that's what's so special about the SEC tournament is they put it in a centralized location. And you can kind of you can kind of get there decently quickly from just about everywhere, mm -hmm. kind of in, in the SEC. I mean, Gainesville might take you a little while to get up to Hoover, but you know, it's not terrible. It it's not terrible. Probably like it all interstate. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so that was uh, that was really cool. It's a beautiful stadium out there in Hoover, and it just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger, as you mentioned. And, you know, what's funny is, you know, I, I kind of have a softball brain now just from being so entrenched in it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you look at the difference between softball and baseball, and you can literally go out there and throw the same girl over and over and over and over and over again with minimal pitchers in between, relief pitchers, things like that. You bring the starter back into a game. There's the reentry rule and all of that. So you could typically get by with like two or three pitchers, mm -hmm. ideally. Baseball, you mentioned it. They didn't even throw their best guys. Drew Beam wasn't really good in this, you know, in, in this SEC tournament run. He had one start. Xander uh, Sechrist was pretty good when he got his start, when they got some redemption over Vanderbilt, because they got smoked the first game of the tournament against Vanderbilt. They sure did. And Nate Sneed was not very good. The bullpen had to come in and do a good job, and Marcus Phillips and Matthew Dallas weren't great late in the game, and they gave up some runs to make it a little bit you know, bigger of a, of a loss, but you need a lot of bullpen pitchers to come in and, and, and help you out throughout an entirety of a tournament where it's like you play what for like three or four days yeah. straight. You need to rely on a lot of different guys and there's a lot of different starters that are thrown out there and it's really about the bullpens and Tennessee's bullpen and their offense certainly came to play. They showed up and showed out uh, again, beating Vanderbilt after, you know, losing to them and then beating Mississippi state and then beating, obviously, LSU to uh, to finish it off. And it's funny because we always talk about how the internet's undefeated. And I saw a picture as you know before we were uh, you know, getting ready for the show on, on Instagram. And it was it was Tony Vitello's face on, oh gosh, what was his name? Um, oh, before. The, uh, gosh, his name is on the tip of Joe, the lion, the Tiger King, Tiger King. What's oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dad gummit. What is the Tiger King's Joe name? Joe something? Yeah, I don't know what it is. My I'm computer's on it. stupid slow, so you you IT on it. But yeah, he was as the Tiger King and he had a tiger in a headlock and it was like the LSU tiger logo <laughs> right there. But I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, can we really put that up there just because was it not LSU who knocked us out in the uh college world series last year? Yeah. Beat us not once but twice. Yep. That was the same pitcher, too. Yeah. That guy dealt on us last year. Yeah. Well, I can't remember. I'm just blanking on his name. But, um, yeah, uh, Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic, that's right. Joe Exotic. Brother. Ackenhausen. Yeah. Was the guy who came in and started the game on Sunday. Pitched a cut two and two-thirds. Solid. No walks. Six Ks was dealing. And then Billy Amick said, get off me, ball. Dude, that was a freaking monster shot. <laughs> they should not have pulled Ackern Ackenhausen in that inning. No. No, Amick too. That was so funny. They were talking about him going like over 17 first hit all week. It's a big one. And that announcer's curse is so wonderful sometimes. <laughs> it can be because they were just like, it yeah, he's really struggled. Hadn't found it and missed on one at his last at bat said, nah, ball. I got you big dog. Right. Sit it over that left field fence into the parking lot. Watch out. Watch out back there. So Another thing that I think is interesting too, and, and I've always thought this kind of, uh, again, being entrenched in the college softball world, the D1 softball world, when guys are struggling or girls are struggling, 
I think there's some undue pressure to say, hey, like maybe you need to make some changes. And I've seen other coaches do it. And sometimes with my 12 year olds, I do it as well. But it's so remarkable to me that sometimes like just just the the absolute faith that these coaches have in their players. So even though they're over 18, over 17, whatever it was to continue to put Billy Amick in the three hole. Yeah. And just say, hey, look, I, I trust you when the moments, you know, the biggest we're, we're going to need a big swing from you. And they got it early in this game. And that was really the difference in the game. That was it. And then there was really Cal Stark late in the game with the bases loaded for LSU and the back pick. Yeah. To pick off the, I believe it was the second baseman, Mill, Milliam, Milliam, mm-hmm. uh, for, freaking, for LSU. Oh, that was such a great throw. Yeah. Humongous play. Huge. Huge. And the, I love the Stark industries. They were like, they're always, they're yeah. like, they're so great, yes. dude. Yeah. So we've had, we just, there's something about Tennessee that has that magic this year, even more so. Like this could be like a redemption top team. Um, I know it's hard to say for somebody that's been the number one seed twice in the last three years, but yeah. this is this is an interesting team. Like, uh, I feel like last year was sort of the redemption team. I thought because, it was going to be. Yeah. Well, well, they well it was because you, you had the year before when they were no, the number one overall seed. They lose to Notre Dame mm-hmm. in game three. What was his name? Uh, for Wake Forest now, Chase Burns. Yeah, who got beat late in that game. Yep. Didn't take him out. Nope. And then last year, obviously, Burns gets relegated to the bullpen. Then he comes out of the bullpen in his absolute gas, lights the out. Super, like the super reliever. Yeah. And that's what we just talked about. You need those guys in a run, like through the SEC tournament, through a regional, through a super regional, and through the College World Series to come out there and do exactly what Chase Burns did. I don't know who's going to do that this year for Tennessee. I don't know if they probably don't have somebody who can come out there and do what Chase Burns did with yeah. all the electricity that he has. But I do believe they have enough guys in that bullpen that can piecemeal it together and to make a deep run back to the College World Series. But I felt like last year was more the redemption year because I don't think anybody was thinking that they were going to do anything of any circumstance. They yeah, weren't going to make it to the, the College World step. Series. Like, like, you know, three, what was it three years ago already when we went? They didn't win a damn game. What not close. No. That was the well, biggest disappointment. Yeah, I guess. Well, the Texas game was, they were back and forth a little bit. And yeah. We, Virginia. Was just very low scoring. Yeah. That's what I remember. It was yeah, like. Virginia was 5 nothing. we lost. Yeah. When we were there, we were sitting right behind the Virginia dugout. It was yeah. beautiful. So and it was hot as crap. It was hot as balls. <laughs> just crushing those uh, summer shanties. We needed those so oh, bad. So bad. I don't Hydration. think I've ever drinking a beer so fast. Yeah. In my life. And you better get that thing down quick because it's going to get warm real fast, exactly. brother. You have to warm real fast. You have to. Great for the sales out there at, uh, what is it? Uh, TD. Is it TD, TD Mar- something? Gosh, why am I? Yeah. yeah. Again, Omaha, coolest city. Yeah. As far as hosting in that, that event. Cause, uh, the, the factory, the mattress factory mm-hmm. popped up my Instagram yeah. again. I was like, <laughs> all that got them a country music. They're ready to go. Uh-huh. Man. They're getting warmed up. They're, oh, getting, yeah. they're getting those reps in before. Yeah. Cause that was like, it's, you know, when you turn them lights at night, all those students mm-hmm. walk out, they come out to like a rave fest over there at the Bud Light tables and all that mm-hmm. stuff. They're going to have a freaking blast. Oh, blast. We're going back someday. We have to. We're going uh, back. And we got to take the boys with us this time. Uh, yeah. Even though they don't love baseball as much as we do, I don't think. You know, Joseph is more of a football guy. Garrett's starting to appreciate Garrett it. Garrett is starting to really appreciate baseball. He does. But Major League Baseball, he's like a Rangers fan. I don't I, Who knows how much? He would get into it if he was there. Yeah. And then Miggy would, he would do what Miggy does. Miggy would do what Miggy does. He finds a way to enjoy baseball. He sure does. <laughs> We're proud of him for yeah, it. We are. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations to Tennessee. We'll see, uh, obviously, on Monday, the selection show. We'll figure out where they go. Sorry that we will not be able to talk about where they go. Well, we know they're going. I mean, they're hosting, so that's all that matters. They're hosting, and we just got to figure out who's coming here. And yes, that's more of what I meant. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I know who's going to Knoxville. Yeah, who's going to Knoxville? Not where we're going. We're going. We're going to be at home. We're going to be number one overall seed, and everybody's thinking like, "Oh God, this is this is not a good thing." There's only been one team ever, and it was like the 1990 Miami Hurricanes that were number one overall seed who won the yeah. you know College World Series. I don't give a damn. You that know, was, yeah. Just go out there and you got to play winning baseball. You know, you get beat, you get beat. If you win, you win. Great. You know, but you got to go out there and uh, I, I know it's going to, they're going to have some expectations on them. But with the amount of success that Tony V has had here with Tennessee and the amount of guys that have been in this organization and on this team, they should be ready for that level of expectation. So I'm not worried about them having like this a lot of pressure as the number one overall seed to perform. Yeah. 
how much do you think goes into Tony? We'll say Tony, and you know, there's some guys still left from that team losing to Notre Dame after being basically the greatest team in regular season college baseball. Yeah, you can pull from that. Yeah. You can pull from that. Um, I think right now it's about, hey, like, let's let's live up to our own hype. You know, everybody's coming for us. We have to be ready because the number one overall seed, I don't care who comes to Knoxville, they're going to be looking to knock you off. And as I said, with Chattanooga going to the regional, crash the party. They want to crash the party. They want to stun the world. That's the motivation that these teams are going to have going into any host city. But you're getting an opportunity to go and face the number one team in the in the country, in Knoxville, in that environment, and Lindsey Nelson, it's going to be special. It will be very special because... I think it's also an opportunity too. Like if you're coming to Tennessee, you know it's a smaller ballpark. So if you've got some bats, man, you feel you have an extra little ounce of take a BR day. You get the right pitching. Yeah, but but I was going to say, I think the biggest thing for me is like being able to keep the, uh, the Tennessee's batters in the ballpark. Yeah. If you can hold them down, don't let Christian Moore, Blake Burke, any of those guys beat you, Billy Amick. You know, uh, and Ensley had a great day today. Yeah. Hunter Ensley, Dylan Dryling <laughs> has been good this year. Like, if you can hold those guys down, because like that was, I saw it through our run with Chattanooga with the softball team when we faced a good team like UNCG with tons of home run hitters. We played them three times in the tournament, then hit a single home run against us. It's if you were able now. to pitch against them and hold them in the ballpark and hold them down you'll have as, en- as good of a chance as anybody. But if you start letting that be a launching pad at Lindsey Nelson, you're going to be in some serious trouble. But to your point, if you can kind of grab some momentum and get the ball out of the ballpark, pitch it well, play some defense, you never know. Not that I'm saying I want Tennessee to lose, but I'm just... No. We're, we're trying to just talk about a way that it could possibly happen. Yeah. And that Notre Dame team was like the best possible answer. They were the oldest team in the in the whole tournament. And they just had it figured out defensively where I don't remember the exact scores, but I do feel like they kept them at bay. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was kind of like six, six or less runs, which if you, if you don't watch a whole lot of college baseball, like today's four, three game is pretty low scoring. Like you're going to get a lot of 10, 11 run with like scores. Like it's kind of, kind of wild the fluctuation it can go. So keeping Tennessee and especially that team that was just bombs over Baghdad. It oh was, my gosh, that year was insane. They insane. hit a lot of home runs this year, too. Oh, that they did. And I, I, I'll i say this. I think there's like a small, like self-created chip on their shoulder from guys like Christian Moore not getting the SEC Player of the Year. And again, our boy from Georgia is well-deserved. One of the greatest runs we've seen in college baseball for a long time. Yeah. But Christian Moore was a triple crown winner in the it SEC was. play. So that makes it a little tough. I hope I hope mm-hmm. there's like some ways they can create those chips on their shoulder. Okay. That's what Tennessee does. Yeah, that's how they keep their their gas on the put on, on the, the gas pedal. Put on the gas pedal. Yeah, Thank I you. Got you. Words are hard. You. Sometimes they are. Yeah. Sometimes they are. Uh, get you a sip of that water. You know. I like, will. One thing, actually, there's a couple of things, and I know you work in athletics as well, and I I think you may agree with me, but I think we need to have just a quick conversation on this. Now that I'm thinking about it, when it comes to baseball, obviously they play nine innings compared to softball, just seven innings. In baseball, once you take somebody out, they're out. Yeah, You can't resub them back in. There's no run rule in college baseball. So these games last forever. You know, you see very lopsided games and you got to play the whole thing out. And pitchers, as we've already talked about, they're much more at a premium in baseball than they are at softball because the overhand motion is the unnatural motion chase. Mm -hmm. I think softball does it right. You've got run rules if the game's out of hand. You got re-entries. You can let different people off the bench going and run. You can sub back in a starter anytime you want. Whoever starts on the uh, in the circle can come back after they've been, been taken out. You can resub any starter at any point. And the games go much quicker. And you get more people involved. Yeah. Baseball needs, college baseball at the very least, needs to start adapting some of these rules. And you can, you can trickle it down to high school. I think it would be great in high school if you had re-entries because that way you get an opportunity to kids that are on the team that you want to maybe get in for a pinch run or to play some defense or something like that. And like We had one girl that would go in and play left field and we'd leave her out there for as many innings as we could until her at bat was about to come up. Then we put the better hitter back in. Mm. So it's just like there's more strategy a little bit to it as well. 
You got to utilize your bench. You get more of an opportunity to utilize the bench. It kind of feels like it's easy to coach baseball because it's like, all right, here's my lineup. It's the best. You know, maybe I need to pinch run for somebody, but then, you know, then they're going to be taken out. So it's like, oh, do I do that? Do I not do that? With softball, like, again, it's that re-entry thing and you, it's just more, I just feel like it's easier and I feel like it, it makes more sense to me, but you maybe don't agree. Hmm. I don't, I just worry like if that's in baseball, it's going to slow it down again somehow. Like I, no, what about the run rule? That'll, that's a that'll big eliminate part. The, yeah. the long ass games that are not even close. But I'll say this and somebody that's in NAI, like they do have the run rule and it's, I think it's 10 after 10 after seven. Okay. But still these games are very long. Yeah. So uh, I'm like, yeah, but. I think the efficiency that every every single coach in softball has, it's like, oh, it, if baseball got that down and adapted, you give it a year or something, people started adapting, then yeah, I think it could work out because high school level was a really good point because you're looking at it from a perspective of there's so many skills that aren't developed for high school students, but maybe this kid's really good at this one thing. Yeah. Like, let's get this guy a really good opportunity and let him have a chance to make a difference at, like, he's good against a lefty batter. Who knows? Like, just anything. Or he's just really fast. Or, yeah. Like, he's a really good defender, but if, he can't hit for bleep. What if this guy can bunt the crap out of the ball? <laughs> and yeah. we, Like, this guy's just good at it, and he's, like you said, he's really fast. Yeah. Lay down a bunt, get to first base, or make a high school, you know, third baseman really have to make a play. Yeah. Or a catcher. Let's do that. Those make sense. I think the high school one makes more sense, but I see how... In college baseball, coaches be like, dog, this would take forever. And we just got the pitch clock, which is a massive difference to me. And in, and in the SEC tournament, they start doing the safety bag. Yeah. They used to do in softball. You didn't like that. It's just weird. Like, I just, I'm just not used to it. Like, I understand why they want to do it. It makes sense because we're trying to avoid injuries at the base, but it's just, it's just weird. I'm just not, I'm just never, I mean, I haven't played with it since I was like in T-ball, little league. Yeah. We used to play with it, but I think it's going to stay. I think I'm it's sure it will. No, they're not going to incorporate it this high of a level and not allow it to stay. Yeah. I think, and Greg Sankey was there today on the call for a little bit. And I think he was like, Hey, this is one of those, we're going to throw it in there mm -hmm. and it's going to stay. Yeah. Like this is not, this is not like a tryout. This is like something. And I think the SEC does this a lot in little tiny rules of we're going to implement something but we're not going to take it away unless something really bad goes wrong. Like yeah. something we don't know about. Yeah. So we're putting this in and it's going to stay unless y'all really screw this up. <laughs> so, uh, and I, and Greg was actually really solid. And again, I'm always kind of impressed by these super leaders in college sports. Yeah. And he is pretty stoked at how much baseball has come along, especially in the last four or five years. And I think Tennessee has a lot to do with that. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Tennessee and LSU, both these teams. Yeah. I mean, LSU star power. Oh, like what? Last couple of years, yeah. Yeah, Paul Skeens. And Tommy Tanks. Yeah, Tommy Tanks. Dylan is, Cruz. Tommy Tanks. Be done. He, got, he got a big oh, chunk massive. of stardom Sorry. last year. I think he's going to keep rolling this year. People love Tommy Tanks. They do. They love it. Well, it, just depends. it just depends how far they go. Because I don't think they're good enough to host. They're probably going to have no, to host. No, they'll somewhere. be a two seed right now. That's yeah. what they're projected by D1 yeah. Baseball. Which, you know... If the story holds true, it's never the number one seeds. So <laughs> I don't know. Never know. Uh, they're, and they played awesome. I mean, they've been playing since Tuesday. So you hope they're not a gas because mm -hmm. that's one thing I would worry about if I'm them. I don't, uh, I mean, you know, if you're playing Hosen today. Like, you, you know, that's, if that's one of your three best guys, that's another guy you're having to throw a lot. And they threw him. How many innings he pitched today? He got into the third, two he, and two thirds. Okay, that's right. So he didn't go very far either. No, he's not like a big starter. He's more no. kind of like a reliever, middle person. He'll yeah. start every once in a while, but he's not. He's not going to go too yeah. deep. Yeah, he didn't go very far today. So that's that's fine. Maybe maybe they played the same route. I didn't uh, keep up with their, like their starters from the first two game for their first two days. Yeah. But they have an opportunity to be really good again. So I don't know, like LSU. Um, I know Kentucky didn't make it very far, but that's another team that's ready to get into it. We watched that series at the house. Like, Tennessee, Kentucky, Kentucky showed up, brother. Yeah. They wanted to beat us. They sure did. They didn't want to. <laughs> Not enough. 
Go SEC champs. Yeah, come on. No way. Get out of here. We don't want that. No way. Um, but yeah, and then it's just mind blowing that you'll be sub five hundred in the SEC and you'll still be in the tournament no matter what. Like these, there's so many stacked teams. In the SEC. Yeah, it's just kind of like the NCAA turn for basketball. You know, like March Madness. You see some of these big conferences where they'll get a bleep ton of teams in. They'll be right around 500 in conference. You're like, oh, do they? Oh, it is the SEC, or is it the Big East? Or well, not the Big East this year, but Big East from back in the day. Like you get all those teams in, like UConn, Syracuse, Pittsburgh. Yep. Uh, Villanova. What else am I missing? There's some other big Georgetown. And Georgetown. I was yeah, like, did you yeah. say Georgetown? No, 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 no. Patrick. Your boy, I love Patrick Ewing. Can't forget, he was a terrible coach, though. Oh, horrendous it. basketball coach! Him. Horrendous basketball coach. Uh, last thing I'll say, like if if you think the SEC is really great in football, what it's done in ba- what it's done in baseball this year is astronomical. <laughs> I mean, you're talking. You're gonna pro- you have a chance again. We'll see tomorrow. But or you today. Ha- we'll see today, really. Uh, yes, today. yes, today. Yes, today on today. your Monday. Yeah. Your Monday. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you'll see if they get four number one seeds because it has a shot. I don't know because I think it's a far drop for Kentucky to go from two to five. Yeah. Arkansas, maybe, maybe not making the final hurt them. So that could slide them out. But no matter what, you're probably going to get three out of the four number one seeds. You're going to get a couple twos and you're going to have a ton of teams in this tournament. And plenty that have a chance to win it. Plenty. Yeah. Because there are some major powerhouses, and you're going to get to watch some sick draft picks. There's going to be a lot of really great players to come out of these next two years in college baseball. This hype that it's brought, and it's another tournament, they're like, live sports are doing this. <laughs> yeah. Live sports are doing that, baby. And that's maybe a little, little dusty of a hand motion, but man. That's okay. Uh, so- <laughs> So uh, I didn't yeah. think about it until you said it. Yeah, I thought about it as soon as I looked yeah. over here. Well, I was like, "Dang, not the best one." Nope. Uh, anyways, so yeah, SEC is doing magical things in baseball. They are. Uh, while we're recording this, I don't know exactly what's going to happen with the softball team, but I will just mention at this moment, it's not looking good. Uh, hopefully, they'll figure out a big comeback against Old Alabama. But you can yeah. figure that out today as you're. Uh, you know, we'll, they'll know what happened. But let's go to basketball real quick with Tennessee. I'll stick with the Tennessee theme. Man, your boy Rick Barnes has been wheeling and dealing in that mystical, magical portal, my friend. Chad Lanier, North Florida, big. grad transfer, 6'4", about 200 pounds. Got to be two something to do something. Mm-hmm. And a man who can shoot the absolute lights out of the ball and can get to the basket. A nice little versatile two guard to play alongside Zakai Ziegler, give me your thoughts on uh, on the addition of Chaz Lanier along with the other guys that they've already gotten the portal. This feels almost like a cherry on top. Because our boy from Hostra, Dubar, and Felix, big rebounder. Elite oh. rim defender. Yes. So we are getting guys that filled up gaps from last year. A dude transferring to Arkansas really hurt in a capacity that wasn't against Zach Eady. But other than that, if he can't guard Zach Eady, I don't want him. I saw what what's what's his name? White boy off the bench. Estrella, who could guard. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Give me PJ Estrella and Felix o- Okpara. Yeah. We we're gonna need him. We're gonna need Okpara because Estrella is gonna be fine in certain situations, but also he's gonna get crushed in others. I It'll think Felix can move his feet a little bit better. Uh, you're not getting a ton of offense out of the guy. Like he's that, a rim protector. He's a rim protector, and he can rebound pretty we like well. That. We like that. Yeah, but today, uh, this weekend, with getting Chaz, man, like the spacing you have on the floor now for Zakai, you're opening up. I I hope Chaz can be like not to this he's not going to play the same but i think Chaz can be what we wanted as far as like notoriety from somebody like uh Bescovy last year like you wanted you needed somebody that's going to flirt with third team second team all sec they can guard your one two if you had two or three yeah and cause havoc shoot the lights out and go get a basket whenever you need something whenever Ziegler's not playing well and I I do think Dubar is going to be somebody that 
is going to try to be played as a Dalton connect, like your big, your big two, three, uh, your big three, I guess he'll yeah. be. Um, so you're hoping he turns into a little bit of that, but I think you're going to get a combination of Dubar and Chaz to be as close to Dalton as you can get. Both guys can shoot and score. Yeah. Cause we don't, I think we got caught a little bit with having what just one score. Now we have two guys that can score not as well as Dalton connect, but can at least you handle never that. You never, not, know. never know. You never know. I mean, we weren't sure what Dalton was going to be this year coming in from a lower level school. Yeah, that's very true. And again, you buy into Rick Barnes guys just come here and they're like, yes, he's my guy. And hopefully these guys are on that train on that wagon, baby. You come here like, oh, he can get me to this level. Yeah. Dalton was a great one. Punter is always my go-to guy. First year he came in, went from a middle-of-the-road SEC player to one of the best overseas guys in the league. Like, he had no chance of being that guy until Rick Barnes came here and developed him. He was like, you got to knock down this percentage from three, and I can get you there, and you got to be able to be able to score off the dribble. And he did it, and he bought in. And I think these guys are here because they're going to buy in. Like, I can also play really good defense. Mm -hmm. And you look at Lanier and, and what he was able to do last season at North Florida in the A-Sun. Again, I know it's the A-Sun compared to the SEC, but still 20 points per game last season on just 13 shots. Incredibly efficient. Mm -hmm. He had 1.2 points per possession last year. That's buckets, friends. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. I mean, that ranked ahead of Zach Eady, Antonio Reeves, and Mark Sears last year. <laughs> wow. Like Chaz Lanier and yeah. here's now at Tennessee and to boot. This is always a great thing. You mentioned Kentucky baseball earlier when you can steal a man that Kentucky basketball was going after with such ferocity. It just feels so much sweeter. Oh, it sure does. My friend. It yeah. sure does. Uh, taken from the wildcats always means a little bit more. It sure does. It just means yeah. more as they say in the yeah. SEC. <laughs> so that's a taken more. Uh, it means more right there. I'm I, excited. I, I know we don't have, the certainty of what Dalton Connect was last year, potentially on this team, we might, we might between Maybe. Dubar and 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 Lanier. But I think the point you made earlier was that it seems like we're going to have a multitude of guys who can go out there and score along with Ziegler. Um, and Ganey is still there, I believe, yep. as well. So they've got some guys who can score the basketball, and that's where you don't need Okpara to to even worry about scoring. Get those rebounds, you know, get the second chance opportunities for the possession, or to have a putback or something along those lines. Just finish around the rim, catch that's some it. lobs, do some things like that. But last year, you you mentioned we we're kind of missing that secondary score, and we talked many a times on this show and on my radio show, the Word with GRIP about how Tennessee needed a secondary score to step up, whether it was a, uh, what's his name? The lefty, not Vescovy, the other guy. Name's escaping me right now. Lefty. Josiah Jordan James. Yes, there we go. Josiah. Triple J. Yes. yes. Triple J. Uh, you know, we were looking for those two guys to really step up and be the secondary scores along uh, next to Dalton Connect. And they just, I mean, they just never, never could. So it's going to be interesting to see what this team looks like. This It's going to be like a whole new group. A whole, yeah. Because we had a lot of holdovers in the last couple of years with Adu and Vescovy and Triple J. And I know the guy was back, but you had a lot of the similar faces that were there for the last like three, four years. Yeah. Now you get like a whole fresh sort of a makeover. And maybe this is exactly what Tennessee needs. You know, it was great to have those, you know, leaders on the team. They just really couldn't live up to the hype that we wanted them to be. And now you bring in a fresh batch of guys and maybe they can live up to that hype and get Tennessee over the hump to a final. four. Yeah. This definitely feels, and dare I say, to a national champion. Oh, don't say it. Knock on all the wood. This Tennessee team definitely feels like a, kind of like a mercenary team. This is a, yeah. this is a push. Yeah. This is a big, big push for Rick because I think you're piecing together some more athletic guys that can also score. You saw what you can do with Dalton for one year. These guys that are coming in there with their fourth and fifth years, you're like, all right, we can make one big push. You see what you need. You got to have a multitude of scores. And dang dog, Ziegler with one more year. Uh, I thought he really learned how to score mm -hmm. last year at a better clip. Um, needs to figure out the three point shot at some points, but that boy. He got a lot of stuff figured out as far as the floater game, all those little touches around the rim, and learn how to attack big guys at a different angle. Yeah. That's that's a hard one to learn where you're his size. 
But getting these guys, this definitely feels like the mercenary team for Rick's last hurrah, in my opinion. I, I think this, I think Rick goes out with the guy. Okay. And wow. I think this is a good push with the right core guys. Like, I'm bringing in some bullies. I'm bringing in some big boys. Let's go win us something. Let's, Let's get over the win hump. Win us something. Let's go over the hump. All you guys, you guys came from smaller schools. Here's your time to shine. Yeah. You're going to get your first dose right here in Thompson Bowling. You're going to feel that energy. It's a little nerve-wracking, though, to, to rely on guys that are, I don't want to say they're unproven, but they're unproven at this level. Yeah. But, I mean, shoot, we saw what happened with Dalton. I know not everybody's Dalton in terms of transferring up competition levels, but put that mercenary team together and we'll see what Rick Barnes can do. As you said, maybe one last ride off into the sunset. One more, baby. One speaking, more. Speaking of the NCAA, some big news happened this past week with uh, the NCAA agreeing to pay out players now Yeah. of P5 schools, school, strictly just P5 school players, correct? Yeah. They're going to pay out a lawsuit and settle with a bunch of players dating back to 2016 and give each player in the P5 of all sports, I believe it is, Yep. a piece of that settlement lawsuit, the $2.7 billion, and then you'd have other players that had you know maybe played more snaps, had better stats, pitched, you know, played more innings, whatever it may be, they're going to get a little bigger piece of the pie because they were a little heavily more heavily involved in generating revenue for the schools. And now moving forward, what they're going to do, the NCAA, I don't know how they're going to do this exactly, but creating some sort of a fund to funnel to players is that going to be off of television revenue or? merchandise sales, things like that. They're going to funnel a portion of that to the player. So on top of NIL, you also have this situation where the NCAA is sort of cracking at this point and saying, oh, we're waving the white flag. We give in. We can no longer not pay players to play because we're going to have all these laws. There's like three pending lawsuits against the NCAA. You can still have other guys that do not want to be part of this that won't have their name in it. They can go out there and they can sue the NCAA themselves if they wanted to. They can create another class action suit, but they just can't be part of this settlement offer. Yeah. Does this feel sort of like hush money? Or oh yeah. Uh <laughs> and, and not in the former it's players. The, it's the it's the loudest hush money of all time. Yeah. Because if they would have gone to court, I'm sure a lot of you guys heard this, they probably would have lost. Actually, they would have definitely lost. Everybody said it was about as automatic as you could get, they would have lost. So why is anybody doing this then? Should they just not be part of the settlement and just go because out? Because the NCAA has enough money where they would have held it off for a long time. Okay. Let's go ahead and get everybody paid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's two point sure. seven billion dollars compared yeah. to five billion dollars. Like, it, yeah, it's spread over fourteen thousand players is what this will all come around to. Um, and I think the NCAA was like, we are already in the worst image possible. And again, I know we reference him, but there's a reason he's as popular as he is. McAfee makes it pretty known even on shows like Game Day. Hey, there's an evil out there. We call it the NCAA. It's right down the road from us in Indianapolis. There's some bad men in there. There's a lot of really tough accusations that go against the NCAA. And their credibility, their perception right now is, is tough, man. Um, but yeah, I can't speak too much on it, but yeah, I understand. I understand like it, but it's just a, it's a tough perception for some people. Um, and that's just kind of your choice opinion on like where, how you look at it. Uh, because I don't think anybody's out there just to, like gets you, but listen, like it's, it's a business and man, with all the new rules and regulations, the NCAA looks, looks tough. It's a tough road for them. Like, and so this settlement, you're able to pay them. I don't know what this means for NIL. I don't know what this means for a collective. I, I assume that there won't be one, one pie. Like I know all these new, like, and I say collective, we'll say from the NIL collective that they already have at most of these schools. I don't know if that's now going to be a part of that revenue thing or yeah. not. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Cause I think that's another thing schools are going to have to figure out. It's like, well, Hey, these donors can't give this every year at some of the middle road schools. So now like, okay, do we just take out of the revenue sharing? Do we give them the guarantee? Because now, as you mentioned with Florida, they had a guy sue them directly. Mm -hmm. And now 
Billy's in trouble. Yeah. So there is going to be a lot of false promise and IL money that's going to come out. There's another kid from Colorado who's out there suing the NCAA as well. Like it's that there are still going to be some things and they're not sure if he's going to jump in to that whole settlement issue or not, but man, I, a lot to figure out. I think it's going to be, if you are in the NCAA world on the business side, this sucks right now. This really sucks, man, because it's, it's a reason. And Saban spoke on it. Like every time we would have dinner parties at my house before three years ago, two years ago, it was, how can you help my son? Yeah. And now it's like, how much can you pay us? Yeah. And that's a big part of race. And he left. Mm -hmm. Now these schools are going to have to deal with it. Now they're going to have to hire somebody and listen, it's really hard to now hire. You're taking away money from a different capacity that we're paying administration people. So now is that going to come out of this collection fund? Not just the athletes? Like you have so many hoops to jump through now that it scares the crap out of me for some of these kids because we're going to pay them and do all this. And now it's going to put in a bigger worry for an administration side. And you have a lot of big egos involved and somebody's not going to like what they got paid or they're going to tell them they're, they're promised this. Cause that's what we're still getting from the NCAA and the NIL money is I was promised this. And you ain't getting that. Yeah. That's getting pushed back real quick. Millions of dollars. Millions, brother. And I don't know, man. It's getting real dicey. So it's, I think we're about to bring in uh, a lot of big wigs from some of these financial companies. And I know this is already starting to happen of like, hey, we need somebody from, I, I, I'm not, I guess I won't throw out any names because I don't want to get tossed into that, but insert giant big X bank. Yeah. And we, we need some of your people to help us out and help us structure this. So if, essentially we're taking away the college aspect of it pretty soon. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. soon. They're going to be employees and it's, it's going to be a different feel around college athletics. Yeah. It's already starting to feel that way. Cause it's yeah. getting bigger and bigger with this restructuring. It's going to be a madhouse, but. And honestly, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world because as a, again, a very much lower division three athlete that was yeah. not, you know, a big time player at all, but just being a part of an athletic team in college sports it does take away a lot of your time and a division one level as well. The pressure is much more there. Obviously you have scholarship money, you have NIL money you have to deal with. It's, it's a job, you know, yeah. there's a lot of time that, that needs to be dedicated into that around your studies, around trying to, you know, be social, make money, do these other things that you want to do to kind of learn how to grow up when you're in college. And uh, it takes a lot of your time and, and your efforts. So I'm not against anybody making their money because if all of these, you know, college athletics has been big business with the TV side of things and game day and all these different things that surround college athletics. And these kids are getting none of that after basically everybody else is making money off of their backs and their names. Like, and these video games now coming out, I, I have no problem with these kids making their money and getting a little piece of this. I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing at all, but it's just, it's just interesting to see how it all is going to come together. And that's, Always what I said about NIL is that there needed to be some sort of caveat on, hey, we cannot use this as a recruiting tool. There needs to be a cap on this stuff to a certain degree. And there was just no cap. It was just like, ah, here it is. And do with it what you will. And we'll see kind of what happens. And now it's just kind of gotten a little crazy. Yeah. I always thought my my thought on it was, I wish, I think it's a great idea it couldn't be a recruiting tool. I think it needs to be, you cannot get paid NIL money until you're actually out of school. That's a good thought as well. You cannot get paid until you get to that school. Or you've done something. Like, you got all these kids, like, you know, like uh, Bryce Young and Nico were paid X amount of dollars. Yeah. And they hadn't even done anything yet. It no. was just to come here. And then Spencer Rattler, you guys talked about it, I think, another time when I wasn't on the show, how he had a deal with, like, a car dealership. Yep. And then he got benched, and then he left. She's yep. like, well, eh, we're just out whatever car and however much money. Yeah. I'm sure. I think it was, like, the big boy Ford. Yeah. Ford Explorer or whatever. Something and he's like, 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 I'm I'm out $75,000 truck yeah. now. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> so uh, that's what worries me is too many promises. And I think a lot of people are backing out. And that's why Florida's in the situation they're at right now. And multiple other people, I'm sure, are doing the same thing. And they just hadn't come out yet. But if 
this boy from Florida wins his case, we're going to see a lot more of these. And the NCAA is now paying these people, and we're going to get some retroactive money, and somebody else is not going to be happy about how much they get. Yeah, a lot. Money uh, causes a lot of problems. It sure does. Uh, more money, more problems. Who said that? JC. That's right. All right, so last thing, two two things that I just want to get to real quick. I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, a couple of the Chattanooga area schools. Ooh. One state championships. You've got um, Baylor softball. Nine Pete. Wow. You also had Silverdale Baptist softball. A two Pete. And nine straight titles is insane. I thought it was wrong. <laughs> Typo. Nope. That's yeah. Right. No, because uh, I was looking the other day and, you know, of course, I follow the Baylor recap and all that stuff. And I was like, wait, they say eight straight and going for their nine. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's a softball dynasty over there at Baylor. Yeah. They're good at sports, man. They're they good at sports. They sure are. Silverdale and themselves over at Baylor, they're doing good. McCauley also won the D2 AA soccer title um, to cap an undefeated season. Oh. I know we go from Baylor to Macaulay, rivals, but it is what it is. And Boyd Buchanan beat Notre Dame for their first boys soccer state title since 2010. Dang, baby. That's some, oh, that's a lot of championships for the city. This city gets better and better at sports every year. Uh, Macaulay dominated to win the D2 AA state track and field title as well. Hey, yo. Another big one. I'm just kind of going down the Chattanooga hey, Times Free Press. Hey, that's up. Get that list. Macaulay going. edges Baylor to extend streak of team tennis state titles. Wow. <laughs> this is crazy, dog. Yeah. This is just spring sports, by the way. Yeah, this is insane. Insane. There's probably others that I missed, but those are just the big ones. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to all of the Chattanooga area uh, high school teams and the players and the coaches that were a part of those state titles. As somebody who was just part of a SoCon state championship, it was an incredible experience. I uh, never was part of anything in high school winning at that level. Sure wasn't, buddy. Neither were you. Sure <laughs> Losing his captain of all time in basketball history out here. Amen. Three claps, one time. Good job. You and JJ, shout out. Uh, he followed up. He followed up well. Yeah. All right. So the last thing that we wanted to discuss, you know, we used to do this if you were a follower, a listener of The Word with G on ESPN Chattanooga. We used to do this every once in a while just to kind of have some fun to break up the monotony a little bit. And you and mm -hmm. I would do it. Maybe me, you, Miggy, me, you, Garrett, me, Garrett, me, Garrett, and Miggy, whomever. I've got these things called a, a chat pack, and it just seems very fitting as we are chatted up uh, to a chat pack here. It's just little questions on tiny cards that just get you thinking a little bit and uh, incite some different conversations. So we thought today, since there's just the two of us, we might just pull from the chat pack and see what we can get. I love it. What we got, buddy? So here's our question for today. And I would love if y'all would answer as well in the comments and things like that. This would be fantastic if you would answer, whether on social media, on YouTube, in the comments, whatever it may be, on Spotify, who cares? Uh, if you could live someone else's life for two weeks, fully experiencing everything they go through internally and externally, whose life would you choose and why? Do you have yours? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So I think mine, my original answer would have been Aaron Rodgers. I think that would have been my my big picture answer. But at this point, I would almost rather be Jordan Love just because I think it would be so cool to be a young stud quarterback in a sport that I've never played. I've never played organized football. I played flag football, to you know, touch football, tackle football on the, on the playground at recess and things like that growing up. But just to be a young up-and-coming quarterback who's about to make $50 million a year and being on a team, the youngest team and being the leader of that team in the NFL with a head coach coming off the year that they had with so much anticipation surrounding this team and this group and so much optimism. I think Jordan Love's just kind of a cool, calm, collected customer. I think it would be cool to go through what he goes through for two weeks just to see what that life is like. Ooh, that's a good answer. That would be mine. Hmm. Um... In prior years, I actually said Justin Timberlake. Okay. That's a, it's That's always, a great answer as well. Somebody who can sing would be fantastic. Yeah, sing, dance. Uh, he's got it all. Um, he has a beautiful wife. Not as beautiful as my wife, of course. Truth. Uh, but Jessica Bill's okay. She's, she's fine. She's, she's fine. fine. Um, Not like fine, fine, Hannah. No, no, she's no. Just she's just like just fine. Like mid, as yeah. the kids would yeah, say. Mid, yeah, mid, mid so compared to you, babe. Yeah. Uh, mother of my child. Um, Girl, no. Justin... 
Justin Timberlake's probably up there as a sports one right now. I don't know. Maybe it's because he, who he is might be different. But Anthony Edwards just be a lot of fun. Right now. Yeah. Not right this moment. Not he's, at uh, this. Uh, he's getting again. We don't know up. what happens tonight. Yeah, we don't have know what happens tonight. So him or Luke, Luca would be a lot of fun. Mm, Luca would be good. Luca sports wise is probably my favorite. You get all the freedom in the world. You just handle the ball. You're just the dude. You got all the skill in the world. Uh, I'll be honest. Like you don't have to like be the greatest defender ever. <laughs> Like you kind of laid back a little bit. I they think put you a, on like somebody who's not going to be, ex, uh, you know, explosive offensively on the other team. Yeah, I, I'd say Luca. I'd say Luca right now is my sports one. Uh, that's just that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure Patrick Mahomes be a great one. But my basketball, for the ladies, Caitlin Clark, I think would be a, a uh, great one to be right now with all the hype surrounding her. Yes and no. Did you hear her comments though? Speaking of no. real quick, so after you know the the her team right now are. Is one in five stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, she was the number one pick. Fever weren't that great. Yeah, fever, were, there's yeah. a reason they were there. Yeah. So they have struggled. And she said, I have deleted my social media because it's just been a lot. It's just been a lot here lately. And she went from, I legit believe during the month of March, she was the most famous person in the world or famous person in the country. Yeah. Right. 100%. Okay. 100% agree. During the month of March, she was the most famous person in the country, probably not the world. Shout out Taylor Swift. Um, during the month of March, she was the most famous person in the United States. And then you get drafted. And that week or two leading up the draft, and then right after, you're probably still really close, top 10, top 15. You're changing the landscape of WNBA basketball. They're making all these changes to bigger arenas, to ticket sales, and to TV packages just for you. It's pretty insane. And so a lot of pressure. I think that pressure for a 22-year-old girl got a little bit so i think if we had our age now like if we could just jump right in yeah then it'd be different yeah. at 22 year old i'm chase probably taking a little hiatus yeah. you know yeah. i'm gonna say hey where's that where's that signing money i'm gonna take a little <laughs> vacation to the beach for a while where's I'm that pull dennis rodman i'm gonna just be out to vegas for a minute yeah i'll be back yeah i think for me i don't think vegas be i think it's still my favorite place but <laughs> All right. Well, I haven't been. I haven't been. So we We're talked gonna, about we'll, it last we'll show. Soon, we, we have to go, we'll go and, uh, figure that out. But I will say this just to kind of cap the conversation in the WNBA talk. I do kind of love that they're like marking the shit out of WNBA. Now. Keep hammering it. Dude. Yeah. Through like they're like partnering with the NBA on social media platforms I see. And they're yep. just like co-sharing stuff. I love like the pregame fits that these girls are wearing. Yep. You know, Cameron Brink has been dominant you know, lately and. Angel Reese and some other players, obviously Caitlin Clark, but um, lean yeah. into your personalities, girls. Exactly, lean into them because you're you're you have big personalities. Yeah, don't be snobs. I know that's been a little thing here lately. What they've tried to push, but I think that's the opposite. I think most of these girls are like, hell yeah, Caitlin, yeah. bring it. We need you. Yeah, Keep they they, they uh, maybe look. There might be a little, you know, a little bit of like deep down like jealousy, like to a certain degree, maybe behind closed doors. I don't think yeah. they come out and say it publicly, but like because we all would love to be that person that changes oh, the game yeah. and things like that. But you look at it and it's like, you know what? Ultimately, end of the day. And even Dawn Staley said it after they beat Iowa in the national championship game that acknowledging Caitlin Clark and what she has done for the game of college bat women's college basketball. So I think everybody needs to kind of look at it from that light of, hey, this is great for our game. Like, this is not any slight against women's basketball, but like it had sort of been irrelevant for a long time. Yep. They had some nice pieces there. You know, you had some really good college players, but nobody that seemed to captivate an audience like Caitlin Clark did. No. And then that feud with Angel Reese and them kind of doing the, you know, the ring finger, you know, the previous season and that kind of them knocking out LSU this past year. Like there were some really good storylines and there's some really freaking good WNBA players or college players that are playing in the WNBA now. And, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't not sat down yet and watched the WNBA game, but I've been also very busy. I'm usually busy at nighttime, so I don't really get that luxury. I, I haven't watched a Mets game, sat down and watched a Mets game in a while. So it's no slight against the WNBA. If I had a regular nine to five job and I was off during the nights, I would 100% love to sit down and watch Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese or any of these other, you know, women's college basketball players that we just got done watching playing in the WNBA. And to me, Chase, it's interesting because you go from, the college basketball season, you get drafted pretty quick after that. And then the season starts ASAP. And especially for her. Yeah. She's been deep two, run as far as you can get the last, the last two years. Yeah. 
So that's a lot of basketball in a short amount of time. I know she had the offseason last year, but didn't really get it this year. I don't really love, I understand why they do it because they're trying to like kind of go a little opposite of the NBA. And, and, you know, this is sort of a downtime in sports with just baseball, the NBA playoffs going on and, and whatnot. But I mean, you got the NHL, you know, Stanley Cup playoffs for those who like hockey, but yeah, nobody cares about it. It's, it's a big world up there in the North. Here. It sure is. The, y'all Yankees up there. That was not me. Don't put me in that group. I won't put you in there. I'm seven years a Southerner, baby. Let's go. Honorary seven Cajun. Years. Yeah. South rise again. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but well, yes, I, I will say, and from a last thing on the marketing perspective, no, do it. I think it's the best part right now. It, it's not, I guess it's a little lucky as far as your timing goes. You get the biggest star in college basketball history to translate right away into the WNBA in what, three months, two yeah. months, I guess. Yeah. So Strike well, ride yeah. that wave, baby. Ride that Caitlin Clark wave. Follow us all over social media at Chatted Up Sports. Find us on YouTube as well at Chatted Up Sports. We are the Chatted Up Podcast. Find us on Spotify, Apple. I think we're on Amazon Podcast, all that good stuff. We are everywhere, bro. Everywhere. Everywhere you can find your podcasts. Uh, five stars, nothing less. Tell a friend. Follow us on social media. You know, Interact with us on there as well. We always try to post different things and clips and, and whatnot. And just follow along with the show. Follow us on social media. Hopefully we get the guys back here this next uh, next week or whatever. We got the corporate challenge coming up in a couple of weeks, so we got a lot of really fun stuff on the horizon. And uh, yeah, we, we'll uh, we'll keep you abreast of everything that's going on. Yeah, we love you. We so appreciate you. Yeah, I will say this: as we kind of hinted at earlier, I will be back for another year. They've asked me back to the Chattanooga softball program, so I am excited about that to share that news with everybody. So we'll be back coaching uh, the mock softball team once again. So, yeah, we're, we're back here. We're getting new beginnings with a uh, new place in Chattanooga. So I'm hyped up, my friend. And we're just going to keep rocking and rolling with the chat it up. One more year, baby. One more year. One more signed contract year. That's it. We, signed, we signed him again. Chat it up, signed him again. <laughs> See you guys. Later. <laughs>